Hey everybody, this is my video review of Howard the Duck comic books from the 1970s. Now, these came out when I was in elementary school. I was probably like in third or fourth grade these came out. Now, some people know Howard the Duck from a really bad movie in the 1980s and a quick cameo at the end of the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. I think I heard people grow, oh, Howard the Duck. Now, I grew up with Howard the Duck comics and for a while, the, these are actually pretty good. Now, if you haven't read... Howard the Duck, these early appearances might not be what you expect, especially especially his first appearance. Now I'm getting a, I'm getting these pictures from this Howard the Duck Treasury Edition from 1975, and these reprint Howard's Howard's Howard the Duck's first few appearances. I think mean, people people named Howard in the 1970s probably couldn't stand this comic book. I mean, who's that guy? Howard Chaikin started doing comic books in the 1970s. So he must have taken a lot of grief. No wonder he always looks t seems ticked off in his interviews. All right, anyways. Um, I used to have all these comic books that these stories were from, but you know, as I keep saying in these videos, I, I sold almost everything in my comic collection to pay off debt, but I did keep some cool stuff that's undervalued, and this Treasure Edition is one of them. Now, Howard the Duck started off as a, a sidekick character in this really weird Man-Thing annual, and it might have even, I'm trying to remember, it might have gone through a couple different Man-Thing annuals, and I don't even remember this story. A lot of the comic books I have, like when I sold them, it's like, well, I have these stories memorized anyways, I don't need to... Don't need to keep them. But I don't remember much about this man. I might have understood it, you know, when I was a kid. So I'm not going to get into it. But it was a combination of fantasy mixed in with man-thing type horror. <laughs> and these fantasy characters are on a quest. And that seems to be what fantasy was like in the 1970s. And you've got the stereotypes and the tropes for the fantasy quest. You've got the, the warrior, the wizard, the hot chick with no clothes. And then you got a man-thing and a talking duck. Now... Man-Thing was the key during this quest, and for some reason, I don't remember, they, they pick up this talking duck from a planet of talking ducks. Now remember, this is a portion of a Man-Thing annual, and uh, this Howard the Duck Treasure Edition only shows the sections that have Howard the Duck. So there's a bunch of other stuff in this story that has nothing to do with Howard the Duck, and <laughs> Howard the Duck's packing a handgun. Okay, Disney's definitely not going to put that in a Disney Duck book. All right, some of these action scenes are pretty cool. 1970s had some good comic books. I don't know if anybody reads Man Thing anymore, but some of those were good. And, you know, stuff like uh, some of the early issues of Dracula and there's a comic called Werewolf by Night were good. And, uh, I mean, Blade, you know, from the movie, everybody knows Blade, but Blade started off as a vampire hunter who's originally introduced in Marvel's Dracula comic book. All right, enough of that. Anyways, so we have this Lord of the Rings type scene, which is which is in Fellowship of the Ring, but this came out from the movie, so most people might just remember this from the movie. But anyways, this pays homage to the Lord of the Rings, and then Howard goes too fast <laughs> and then falls to oblivion, and that was it for Howard in the annual. They just the quest just continued without him, and uh, then either in that Man Thing annual, I think it was at the end that like there's a, a backstory at the end of the Man Thing annual, they show what did happen to Howard the Duck, and you have this ah. All right, so already his origin's pretty crazy, and then his first solo story is pretty weird too. Now, Howard the Duck's one of those comics uh, that needs the right people working on him for it to be any good, because a lot of people can write or draw good Batman stories or Avengers stories or regular superhero stories, but it it takes a unique personality to put together a good Howard the Duck comic book. And I think the the creator and the first writer was Steve Gerber, Gerber, Gerber. And I thought when I was a kid that he was probably doing a lot of drugs to write these stories. I don't know, maybe not. He, you can come up with crazy stuff when you're on drugs, but you can't make him coherent, so maybe he wasn't, I don't know. And uh, these first couple Howard the Duck backstories, I think there are, like there was one in Manthing Annual, I don't know, 3, and then one in Manthing Annual 4, but they gave these stories elements of horror, which makes sense because they were in Manthing Annuals, and Manthing was kind of a monster comic book. Okay, anyways, in one story, you have this weird guy who turns himself into a giant frog, and then the next story, you got this vampire cow. I mean, these were strange enough to read, even if you didn't really care for the premise of a talking duck trapped in a world filled with, uh, what's it, like, hairless, talking hairless apes, or, or uh, hairless talking apes. Okay, that was a com might sound like computers making a sound. All right, now look at the comic art. This is, this is way higher quality than most comic books. Um... Especially today, maybe even back then, but especially today. Most comic book art today sucks when you compare it to this, but okay, I'm not complaining because everybody knows it. I just don't buy the new comic books. I probably stopped in the 
late 1990s during that comic glut when uh, Marvel and DC were into like these elf comics where all the characters looked like elf. All the artists were drawing like elf comics. I can't stand elf comics, so I stopped buying them. Now, this is good comic book art. It's not, tar- not cartoony. It's really detailed. These definitely are not Disney Duck comics. Now, this part is from Howard the Duck number one. And I'm not going to show the entire issue because it would take way too long, but I do want to show that this issue, and this is still reprinted in that same Treasury edition, that um, this issue introduces Bev, who's the, uh, the, 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 the hot female sidekick who always wore skimpy clothes, and a boost sales. And they put Spider-Man in the first issue too. And even Spider-Man's pretty well drawn. He's probably better drawn in this comic book than he is in a lot of uh, Spider-Man comics. And this wasn't even a regular Spider-Man artist either. Now, when Gerber left Howard the Duck, it was just, just turned into another talking duck comic book. I mean, they, they just made sure that the sidekick girlfriend was in a bikini or in skimpy clothes all the time. And, a, you know, a bunch of nerdy guys would still buy the book for a while. Now, if you're looking for a crazy comic book series that's different and entertaining, I would try the early issues of How the Duck. If you want to start slow or slowly, just read this uh, treasure edition. You'll know if you want to continue reading the comic book series or not. All right. That's it for my review of How the Duck comics. If you like this video... Please uh, hit like or subscribe so I know to make more of them. And also check out my blog, Dysfunctional Literacy, for more reviews and my own original stuff. And there's also my book on Amazon, Crap is Not a Bad Word, which I put up for pretty cheap since I'm an unknown. No one wants to spend money on an unknown. That's fine. And that's it for my self-promotion. I hope you liked the video, and uh, thanks for watching.